John saw, John saw of the glancing of the sun. He said, This is the land who gave out his life and would all the way the sins of the world. This is the land. The Condition for Eternal Life. First Bible Lesson, Romans 8 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Second Bible Lesson, 1 Peter 4.13 But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Golden Text John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Brethren, what is read to you summarizes the theme of our revelation, which serves as the opening address to the leader's representative meeting. Many regard it lightly when mention is made about the leader's representative. Ignorant of the full meaning of the term leader's representative, many begin to struggle for the post. To represent somebody does not require personal wisdom or understanding or educational attainment or worldly position or wealth. To represent only means to stand in for the person concerned in his absence. Walk in the footsteps of the Christ. You have heard it read to you that he who believeth in the Son has everlasting life, but he who believes not in him suffers eternal damnation. His punishment has neither the beginning nor an end. Who are those who believe in him? They are those who walk according to his footsteps, doing what he instructs. If he is a truthful person, if he is humble, all his representatives all over the world must be humble. As a representative of another, you ought not to do anything according to the dictate of your mind or according to your thought. Neither should you capitalize on the influence of your position. Rather, you should follow the footsteps of the person you represent. It is said that whoever speaks of himself seeks for personal glory. But he who does the will of the one who sends him is true and there is no deceit in him. That is why he said, of my own I can do nothing, but as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek for my will, but the will of him who sent me. Always seek to do the will of him who sent you. The whole brotherhood of the cross and star is Christ's representatives. As a representative, you must live exactly as he instructs. You should not quarrel with any person. You should not get exasperated. You should not beat up any person. You should not commit any act of sin. He did not preach about any church, nor did he preach about any prayer house. He preached and practiced love. He discriminated against no person. He treated liars, thieves, and every other person equally. He did nothing to please himself, but was satisfied in doing the will of him who sent him. What is really meant by representative is to do the will of him who sent you and to finish his work. You have no right to exercise your own wisdom or thought or power or to introduce your own words. Since you have got the right or inheritance as a child in this kingdom, when you suffer with him, you will also rejoice with him. All children of God are God's representatives. Yesterday, you were told that we are the children of God. As children, you are representatives, and as representatives, you are expected to walk in the footsteps of your Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the first Son, and you are the second or the third, and so on following as children consecutively behind Him. As children, you must have a share in suffering and torture. The Scriptures say that he who suffers tribulations in the flesh is separated from sin. It behooves us to put on the armor of our Lord Jesus Christ. We should clothe ourselves with a thought of His sufferings. It is not the place of any Christ representative to shout on any other person, or to criticize or tell lies, or act according to one's thoughts. When you do this, 
Whom do you represent? All the inhabitants of the world are Christ's representatives. He had said that he had left an example that you should walk according to his footsteps. As the Father sent me, so do I send you to all the world. The whole Christendom is Christ's representatives. The whole Muslim world is Christ's representatives. The inhabitants of the four corners of the world are God's representatives. A good child must resemble his father. As a representative of God, we must resemble him, walk in his footsteps, according to his peace, love, humility, good manners, patience, and meekness. He is my father, your father, and the father of all the inhabitants of the world. A good child must resemble his father. Our Lord Jesus Christ had come and had left a pattern of life that we must follow. He left for us what the Father approved. He was the true representative of God and of the Son and of every other thing. For this reason, He suffered persecutions and tribulations without any fuss. That was the life pattern He handed over to all the children of God. Brethren, do not be mistaken any longer to do anything as directed by your thoughts or educational knowledge, your position. We all must walk according to the footsteps of the Son of God. All inhabitants and institutions are God's representatives. All governments are God's representatives. All chiefs and kings of this world are Christ's representatives. All church denominations, both great and small, are Christ's representatives. All mothers and fathers are Christ's representatives. All companies, factories, and firms are Christ's representatives. We must not, therefore, act according to the dictates of our spirit. Since we are representing a higher being than us, we have to follow His promptings. He teaches us to love one another even as He loves us. Anyone who abides by this instruction has everlasting life, but whoever does not abide has everlasting punishment. Brethren, I do not want to take you far. The first lesson will now be read. First Bible Lesson Romans 8.17 And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. The Qualities of a Representative Do you realize then the kind of representatives you are? You represent Him in suffering, persecutions, disgrace, and torment to do good to a person you know not to love everybody, even those who hate you, to be patient when you are abused. These are the characteristic traits you are supposed to possess as representatives. Even though some found churches which are called Church of Christ, Church of Jesus Christ, but our Lord Jesus Christ founded neither church nor prayer house. He taught and practiced love throughout all the world. He taught us to live peacefully with one another and to live in unity. There is no church denomination that any person in the world can say our Lord Jesus Christ had founded. No person can also claim that our Lord Jesus Christ loves a particular church or hates the other. He did not found church denominations, but taught and practiced love and sent out every person to represent Him. He did not teach discrimination, nor quarreling, nor warfare. Rather, He commanded that, As I love you, so love ye one another. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations. As Christ laid down His life for us, we ought to lay our lives for others. That assignment is what we are carrying out now. It is the work He is doing up till today. As you start off, or as I start off, we are representing Him. Both male and female must have hands on deck. To make the whole world one is a task that all of us must do. It was for this purpose that He came and suffered torments, death, but finally resurrected. He has never spoken good or evil of any church denomination. He rather preached against such practice as killing, falsehood, and theft. He encourages everybody to have love. He does not bear testimony about church denominations or prayer houses or any human being. He bears testimony about the Father. That is why He says, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. 
For he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. As he had laid his life for you and I, it is our bounden duty as his representatives to do same for our brethren. Go and preach to thieves to forsake stealing. Go and preach to fornicators, juju men, and churches, and every person that they should forsake discrimination, quarreling, and pugnacious tendencies. Let us follow the footprints of our Lord Jesus Christ, because we are not doing our personal job. You will recall when John reported to him that he saw one casting out demons, and they rebuked him because he was not one of them. What reply did he give? He said he should not be rebuked because he that is not against us is for us. Anybody who has the Spirit of God in him does not speak evil against our Lord Jesus Christ. And nobody can say that our Lord Jesus Christ is King except He is God by the power of the Holy Spirit. You should not therefore condemn any church denomination or prayer house or government or any person at all. Because you are witnessing for the truth, you have to preach Christ. God comes as a thief in the night. The Father is here on earth, the Son is here, and the Holy Spirit is here. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of Jehovah God and His Christ, and He shall reign forever. This knowledge is what has eluded the entire world, and that is why they suffer like thieves, murderers, because whoever does not believe in the Son has no everlasting life. There is a spiritual song which says, The angels say it is time. The children of God say it is time. But Satan says that there is still time. The time that is purported to remain is what brings untold hardship to the world. He had said that he will come like a thief in the night. Right now, has he not come like a thief in the night in your midst? This wisdom is hidden to the scientists, to learned men, to experts, to necromancers, to professors, and in fact, to all inhabitants of the world. Since we are children, we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. We have a share as joint heirs. Condition for the Children of God It is one thing to kill an elephant, but the most important thing is how to carry the carcass home. Stones are very expensive, but the weight makes the profitability very disheartening. You rejoice whenever you are told that you are children of God. The share of the children of God is suffering, disgrace, imprisonment, false accusation, sleeplessness. Do not think that to become a child of God is a child's play. You do not have to testify about yourself, but you preach about Jehovah God and His Christ. Believe in God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Remember that our Lord Jesus Christ had said, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in Him who sent me. Whoever does not obey my word is not mine, but it is the word of God that he disobeys. Whoever accepts me accepts Him who sent me. That is why it is said, a messenger does not speak in parables. Why do you, as a messenger, speak in parables? Why do you hit back at somebody who hits at you on hearing your preaching? Why do you refuse going to a place assigned to you, claiming that those there are satanic? You will also recall how Ananias resisted attending to Saul of Tarsus, saying, I have heard such much this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Remember also that on the occasion of his saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter resisted, saying, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God had cleansed, that call not thou uncommon. When he entertained doubts about whether or not to go with them thrice, he was asked to go down, for he was sent. Brethren, it pleases God to see us suffer for doing good. For that purpose, we were called because he had led his life and had left an example for us. We must, as Christ's representatives, walk according to his footsteps. You are received as a representative of him who sent you. Do you now realize what is expected of us representatives which we are supposed to be? When a finger is pointing at you, it is not to you, but to the one you are representing. Any person who abuses you does not abuse you per se, but he whom you represent. 
you do not even have anything to do with what is said to you because you have not spoken in parables. If you are slapped, it is he who is slapped. Any person who rejects you rejects that person whom you represent because you have not gone on your own. Any person who accepts you does not accept you, but he who sent you. If you are received, do not puff up because you are not the one received. When one receives from you in an extortionate way, he does not receive from you, but from him who sent you. When God sent Moses to Pharaoh to tell him to release the children of Israel, he also said that he would harden Pharaoh's heart. That did not stop Moses from going. Moses spoke to Pharaoh, but Pharaoh refused. Moses then acted according to the instructions of God, and wonderful things happened. When the wonders were performed, Pharaoh sent to him to find out if he could stop those things from happening, he would also release the Israelites. As a messenger does not speak in parables, he caused those things to end. He went back to Pharaoh, and instead of Pharaoh redeeming his promise, turned it down. Procrastination is the thief of time. One thing we should know is that obedience is better than sacrifice. If he sends you with words to a person, in order that the person may repent, but instead he deals slaps on you, you are a mere messenger and should not wage war, but to go your way with joy. If he sends you back, do not argue that you were slapped the first time. Go back there, for your master knows why. If he sends you to a place you had neither known nor heard of, nor known the location, it is not your place to argue. All you have to do as a messenger is to find your way to the place. Whether it requires diving under the water to that place, do so. You cannot argue that there is no time or that you defer to some other period. Whom should he wait for? As a representative, you must carry out the order. There is no procrastination. An Unforgotten Gospel For all this while, have you not known that the children's share is suffering? As children of God, suffering is in wait for you. No twenty, a Beatle choir has one song. If they were here, I would wish them to render that song. You deny him by saying that you are not Jesus and cannot suffer in the manner you do. When you do this, you have failed. It is said, those who do not believe in him, suffering, afflictions, and everlasting punishment await them. I do not think that the gospel of this night shall ever be forgotten by you, because whoever says he is a child of God must have a share in this suffering and affliction. If you suffer as a result of your involvements in politics, diabology, or in the things of this world which are without benefits, how much more your suffering in God's service as a child of God to obtain eternal life? Before the invention of aeroplane, one cannot recount how many lives and how much money were lost in the attempt, and the progressive development of the invention. Before the discovery of electricity, lives, money, and time lost cannot be recounted. No Cross, No Crown Learn from the suffering encountered by our Lord Jesus Christ before establishing Christianity, and before brotherhood assumed the shape it exists today. Reflect on the souls lost, the suffering of people, money spent, and the years lost. Count the number of souls lost right from the time of Abel till the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. Realize how many people were killed, imprisoned, burnt, stoned, beaten up, and tied to stakes because of this gospel and because of the name of God. Do you not hear that Lucifer had promised and betted that nobody would hear the name of God? He then embarked upon false propaganda throughout the world. That is why you notice him dominating and God dwelling in sorrow. Brotherhood is the kingdom of God. You have heard the testimony given by one of my children here that all the churches in the world are under their governance. He has also made it known that the only place they cannot exercise their control is the brotherhood, which is the kingdom of God. He speaks of how they feed fat on the various church denominations. When attempts are made for any incursion into brotherhood, they are lashed out. If you were present then to hear what he said, you would have been astonished. He spoke of how arrangements were underway to wage war with brotherhood using 3,500 angels. Today is the first time of hearing such a story. 
He went on to say that those of you here are unaware of the fact that this premises is guarded over by 4,000 angels. This number does not include the angels outside. On their arrival here, he disclosed, only three angels from here defeated more than 3,000. Brotherhood, the Ark of Salvation Have you heard of that? If I had told you this, you would have thought that I am trying to please you. Those calibers of people are coming from various places to remit such messages to you, whether you will be convinced, you are in the kingdom of God. You have to glorify God. You have to serve Him day and night. You are the representatives of God. Go to thieves and plead with them, not bothering even when you are beaten up. Go to a necromancer and tell him that the era of diabology has passed, that he should come and follow God into the ark and be saved. Go to a murderer or to any person, plead with him, give him tea, sing and give him vision, do all you can to entice him. Whether you are beaten up or abused, accept the situation. All the false allegations you suffer are perpetrated by Lucifer and his followers. It is in fulfillment of what was said that false prophets will come. He has, however, completed his job and is now under imprisonment. Brethren, let the second lesson be read, because I do not intend to overload you. Second Bible Lesson, 1 Peter 4.13 But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that, when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Brethren, what do you lose? If we partake in His suffering and also have a share in His glory, what do we lose? But if we deny Him and He denies us, and we end up in everlasting fire, what will it profit us? Because in those days, whichever city He went to, He sent out His disciples in twos to preach to the people. Right now it is meant for us to enter into all parts of this world to testify about His glory. If you suffer with Christ, you will be glorified with Him. You will recall that on a certain Sabbath day when the disciples were hungry, they went into the cornfield and plucked and ate the corns from the fields. Also there are places you will enter and you are attacked by mosquitoes and sand flies or suffer hunger. Do not be worried about such things. Be consoled that when you share in His own suffering, you shall be glorified with Him. Remember how the white missionaries left their parades to this dark continent to live with infectious mosquitoes. Such names as Mary Slessor will readily come to mind. They trooped down here to Africa because of this glory. Some even died on their way. Greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. The whites were living like beasts. The blacks were living like beasts. Did one know his left from right? Because of those who went about to evangelize, sacrificing their lives for this cause, they were killed on their ways. Some died in canoes, some in aeroplanes, some because of hunger, some were devoured by beasts. All these happened for the sake of this glory. When he will be revealed, they too will be revealed. Peter was imprisoned. Paul was imprisoned, James was killed, some were cooked and burnt, some were burnt at stake, some were macheted, some were crucified, while others were stoned. These are the expectations of the children of God, the joint heirs. It is said, no cross, no crown. The revelation of the glory of Jehovah God and His Christ proceeded with difficult encounters. It is no easy thing. A delicious meal costs money. Truth is as bitter as it is objectionable. Now is the time. All Nigerians are God's representatives. Let us rise, listen to Him, and do His work, day and night. Whatever suffering besets us, let us realize that if we suffer with Him, we shall be glorified with Him. You are witnesses that Peter and other disciples were killed for professing that Jesus was the Christ of God. But finally, He was truly revealed as the Christ. As it now comes to be accepted that our Lord Jesus Christ died and on the third day was resurrected, it was not easy to be accepted. Firstly, many were bribed not to say so. Later on, others were killed for professing that our Lord Jesus Christ died and resurrected. 
Many were beheaded because of this. But today, all the world is fully aware of the fact that He died and on the third day God rose Him up. It is not an easy thing for the truth to come out clear. You are hereby charged to take up action. Do not fear any situation. Our Lord Jesus Christ was not killed for making the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, or the dead to rise. He was killed for professing that He is the Son of God. And this type of proclamation is strongly detested by Satan. The disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, like Peter, were killed, some beheaded, some crucified, because of saying that Jesus is the King and the Christ of God, and that He resurrected on the third day. That was the main reason behind their persecutions, and not because they healed the lame. Stephen was stoned to death because of this glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ was taken before the courts of men and killed because of the glory. As Christ's representatives, you need not fear anything. There is no cause for alarm, because the Father is here, the Son is here, the Holy Spirit is here, all the children of God are here. All the angels are here. All the prophets are here. We have no difficulties whatsoever. When you are setting out to any place, you are accompanied by millions of angels. My only duty, and yours too, is to testify about the glory of God. But if we are able to suffer with Him, we will be able to share in His glory when He shall be revealed. As our brother Paul rightly said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall He revealed in us. Now, the whole West Indies are anxiously waiting for us. Russia, India, Great Britain, in fact, the whole world waits for you. What really are you doing here? Go to the world and make the whole world my disciples. Around here and the environs, all nooks and corners, schools, hotels, governmental circles, necromancers are inviting you to tell them of this glory. At times, when you waste time, they turn around to tell you. What else do you wait for? Under rain or sun, fear nothing at all, because when He shall be revealed, you will be revealed with Him. Brethren, that our brother also testified that while he was at home, four young men visited him. Brethren, if they had not gone to him, would he not have perished? They went to him at the exact time he had made up his mind to commit suicide. You are all representatives of God. Go to streets and wards, to villages and towns. Please do not be weary, do not lag, do not sleep, because there is no more time to sleep. The time to seek for vain glory is past. The time to behave according to the dictates of one's spirit is past. You have to behave according to the instructions of the Father. Brethren, I do not intend to take you further. Let our golden text be read to you. Golden Text, John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Belief in the Christ subsumes eternal life. Very shortly, no person will challenge you. You have heard what is read to you that whosoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God shall abide with him. The situation subsumes eternal damnation, and that is why when our Lord Jesus Christ sent forth his disciples on ministry, he warned them, saying, Whatsoever town or city you enter into, inquire who is worthy, and there abide till you go there. And when you come into a house, salute it, and if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words when you depart, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. For say I unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city." those who believe in God, and those who do not believe. You have heard what is read to you, that whosoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But he who does not believe in the Son will be visited with eternal wrath of God, which means eternal damnation. He has also said, Whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, 
of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed before my Father and before the angels. He also says, Whosoever denies me, I shall also deny him. He advises that we should trust in him and in the Son, but should not trust in ourselves nor in any other person. Who are those who believe in him? They are those who walk according to his footsteps, those who accept to bear the marks of persecution with him and to suffer torment, disgrace, false calumny, and imprisonment and other uncomplimentary remarks with pleasure. Who are those who do not believe in him? They are those who feign shy for everything, who are afraid of disgrace, imprisonment, torment, and punishment. Any person who wants to belong to brotherhood can belong. Whoever does not want to belong can stay off, because they confess that they are easily irritated and exasperated and that they are human. Who are those who neither trust nor believe in Him? They are those who preach the gospel of retaliation, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. They are those who will return fire for fire. If they are abused, they will abuse back. They will set brotherhood aside in order to revenge. Who are those who do not believe in Him? They are those who do not discuss brotherhood in their offices, those who do not put on white apparel that they may not be challenged, disgraced, and persecuted, and so they always keep quiet and only pretend. If they are asked whether they are brotherhood, they will murmur unintelligible answers. Be not ashamed in disclosing your identity. A great many of you who are brotherhood always come from Uyo to participate in brotherhood activities in Calabar, after which you remove your soutane into your suitcases and return on plain dresses. But there is brotherhood in your neighborhood at Uyo, but you feign shy to attend. Some from Abba who wish to participate in any brotherhood activity would go to join others in another town, after which they will go back to Abba and hide their identity. There are many who pretend not to know anything about brotherhood. You can also find a couple in the house. The wife is a brotherhood, but does not tell the husband. The husband is a brotherhood, but fails to tell the wife. Two of them always attend brotherhood separately, but one does not know the other. Each of them behaves that way because he does not want any conflict or disgrace or false allegations against him that he is a vampire, cannibalistic, or an infidel. Some only practice brotherhood in Calabar, but when they go back to their communities, they will hide their identity because their parents are members of another church denominations. They will not worship in their community, neither will they feel free to greet any brotherhood member, but down in Calabar they are seen as very important personalities. The fact is that when once it is known that they are brotherhood, the community will be thrown into confusion and commotion. They will be challenged by the citizens that they cannot operate their Beelzebub in the community. So, brethren, let us believe in the Son. All what happened to our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, are still indelible in your minds. If we share in His tribulation and affliction and believe in Him, we shall have eternal life. That is why we should go to our children who stay alone, those who are brotherhood in remote places. We should go there to comfort and encourage them because they are being shaken even in places where people do not see the light. Those who only hear about brotherhood, we should go to them by day and by night. Trust in God and do the right thing. Do not trust in any man. Do not believe in any angel, because we are Christ's ambassadors. Take up His words, His injunction, His instruction, and His glory, and reveal to all inhabitants of the world in the directions of the wind. For if we believe in Him, we shall have eternal life. If we accept to be afflicted with suffering as He accepted disgrace, allegations against Him, and other punishment, we shall have everlasting life. When you go, do not preach about church denominations or any other thing, but preach the Holy Spirit, because He is a thorn in the flesh in the world. When you tell people about the Holy Spirit, they want to kill themselves and rend their clothes those who do not believe in the Holy Spirit. There is no other topic or theme of the gospel which is as disturbing as that of the Holy Spirit, especially the reception of the Holy Spirit, the impact of which is much more disturbing throughout the world. You are true witnesses to the fact that the whole world argues that the power of the Holy Spirit ended on the day of Pentecost, and that since then the Holy Spirit is no more in existence. 
The sect of Jehovah's Witnesses believes in Jehovah but do not believe in the Holy Spirit. The Church of Christ believes in the Christ but does not believe in the Holy Spirit. Many of the Orthodox churches believe in both Moses and the Christ, but they do not believe in the Holy Spirit. The so-called established churches reject vehemently the idea of any one purported to be caught up by the Spirit. Once they see somebody shaking or speaking with a strange tongue as he is caught with the Spirit, they will drive him out that he is mentally deranged and that he is possessed of the demon. This is an indication that if they were to know our Lord Jesus Christ during His advent, they would have been the first set of persons to arrest and cast Him into prison. Because He was led by the Spirit into the desert, even the very brothers of His regarded Him as a demented fellow till He was crucified, and so they were all the time bent on chaining and taking Him into the prisons. It is therefore conclusive that whosoever believes in Him has eternal life. The Reign of the Holy Spirit Quench not the Spirit A great many of you here always try to quench the Spirit, because when the Spirit catches up with you, you try to sum up courage and comport yourself and pretend in order to maintain your position as a gentleman so that people will not laugh at you. To many others, the Holy Spirit reveals certain things to them, but they are not prepared to comply, because they argue that they do not want to be disgraced. The Scripture maintains that whosoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whosoever does not believe in Him shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him, along with eternal damnation. One should, therefore, be extra careful doing those things as He directs us to do, and refraining from what He forbids us. We should not do anything out of our own volition. We should not seek after our own glory any more, not look for our own good, nor the goodness of our ward, nor our family or our community, but we should always seek to establish His own goodness and to protect His glory and the glorification of the name of Jehovah God and His Christ. This is the era of His glory and the time for the manifestation of His glory on earth to the realization of the inhabitants of the world. This is era of the Holy Spirit. Resist Him not. The Father had accomplished His duties. The Son had also completed His duties. But this is the era of the Holy Spirit who has assumed His rulership. Preach to the government about the Holy Spirit. Preach to the church denominations. Preach to the necromancers. Preach to the thieves. Preach to women. Preach to the whole world that this is the reign of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ preached about the Holy Spirit when He testified that when the Comforter comes, He would lead you to the accurate wisdom of the truth. Whosoever therefore shall blaspheme against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whosoever will blaspheme against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, whether in this generation or in the generation to come. Brethren, it is said one stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. I do not wish to be tedious unto you. Those who have ears, let them hear. May God bless His holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star by leader and teacher Alumba Alumba Abu Compiled by George Morales This is the Lamb who gave out His life Who took all away the sins of the world those who came before him were thieves, they were robbers. He said, This is the Lord who gave out his life to all the way, the sins of the world. This is the Lord who gave out his life to all the way, the sins of the world. Of the world. Those he calls are those he has chosen.